welcome back to Storytime with Winnie and Nan. Our theme for today's show is summertime. And to do the crafts that we're going to do today, I'm going to tell you what you'll need to gather in order so that you can do the crafts. You will need one paper plate, four toilet tissue rolls, one paper towel roll, a coffee filter, the triangle cone type, some cupcake liners, some cookie cutters, whatever shapes you would like, some crayons, some tissue paper, a couple of pipe cleaners, some clear tape and some glue, and some cotton balls. So these are the items that if you can gather those when we do the crafts, you'll be all ready to go. The first book that I'm going to share with you today is called Thunder Cake. And this book, Thunder Cake, is by Patricia Polacco. And you'll enjoy, there's a lot of books that Patricia Polacco has written. And she wrote her books about things that happened to her in her real life. So the stories that she wrote are events and things that happened to her in her real life. And this story, Thunder Cake, is a wonderful story about her as a little girl, and she was a little bit afraid of thunderstorms. And you know who else is afraid of thunderstorms? Winnie is a little bit afraid of thunderstorms. And Patricia Polacco's grandmother came up with a really fun way to make her not be so afraid of thunderstorms. And this is what this book is all about. So I hope you enjoy this book. Thunder Cake by Patricia Polacco. Grandma looked at the horizon, drew a deep breath and said, this is Thunder Cake baking weather all right. Looks like a storm coming to me. Child, you come out from under that bed. It's only thunder you're hearing, my grandma said. The air was hot, heavy, and damp. A loud clap of thunder shook the house, rattled the windows, and made me grab her close. Steady, child, she cooed. Unless you let go of me, we won't be able to make a thunder cake today. Thunder cake, I stammered as I hugged her even closer. Don't pay attention to that old thunder, except to see how close the storm is getting. When you see the lightning, start counting real slow. When you hear the thunder, stop counting. That number is how many miles away the storm is. Do you understand? She asked. We need to know how far away the storm is so we have time to make the cake and get it into the oven before the, thun the storm comes. Or it won't be real thunder cake. Her eyes surveyed the black clouds away off in the distance. Then she strode into the kitchen her worn hands pulled a thick book from the shelf above the wood stove. Let's find that recipe, child, she crowed as she lovingly fingered the grease-stained pages to a creased spot. Here it is, thunder cake. She carefully penned the ingredients on a piece of note paper. Now let's gather all the things we need, she exclaimed as she scurried towards the back door. We were by the barn door when a huge bolt of lightning flashed. I started counting like Grandma told me to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then the thunder roared. Ten miles. It's ten miles away, Grandma said as she looked at the sky. About an hour away, I'd say. You'll have to hurry, child. 
Gather them eggs careful like, she said. Eggs from mean old Nellie Peck Hen. I was scared. I know she would try to peck me. I'm here. She won't hurt you. Just get those eggs, Grandma said softly. The lightning flashed again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I counted. Nine miles, Grandma reminded me. Milk was next. Milk from the old kick cow. As Grandma milked her, a kick cow turned and looked mean right at me. I was scared. She looked so big. Zip went the lightning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I counted. Baroom went the thunder. Eight miles, child, Grandma croaked. Now we have to get chocolate and sugar and flour from the dry shed. I was scared as we walked down the path from the farmhouse through the tangled weed woods to the dry shed. Suddenly, the lightning slit the sky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I counted. Boom, ba-boom, crashed the thunder. It scared me a lot, but I kept walking with Grandma. Another jagged edge of lightning flashed as I crept into the dry shed. One, two, three, four, five, six, I counted. Crackle, crackle, boom, kaboom. The thunder bellowed. It was dark and I was scared. I'm here, child, Grandma said softly from the doorway. Hurry now, we haven't much more time. We've got everything but the secret ingredient. Three overripe tomatoes and some strawberries, Grandma whispered as she squinted at the list. I climbed up high on the trellis. The ground looked a way long way down. I was scared. I'm here, child, she said. Her voice was steady and soft. You won't fall. I reached three luscious tomatoes while she picked strawberries. Lightning again. One, two, three, four, five, I counted. Kabang, boom, maroom, the thunder growled. We hurried back to the house and the warm kitchen, and we measured the ingredients. I poured them into the mixing bowl while Grandma mixed. I turned the butter for the frosting and the melted chocolate. Finally, we poured the batter into the cake pans and put them into the oven together. Lightning lit the kitchen. I only counted to three, and the thunder rumbled and crashed. Three miles away, Grandma said, and the cake is in the oven. We made it. We'll have real thunder cake. As we waited for the cake, Grandma looked out the window for a long time. Why, you aren't afraid of thunder. You're too brave, she said as she looked right at me. I'm not brave, Grandma, I said. I was under the bed, remember? But you got out from under it, she answered. And you got eggs from old Nellie Peckhen. You got milk from the old Kit Cow. You went through the tangle weed woods to the dry shed and you climbed the trellis in the barnyard. From where I sit, you're a very brave person and only a brave person could have done all those things. I thought and thought as the storm rumbled closer. She was right. I was brave. Brave people can't be afraid of a sound, my child, she said, as we spread out the tablecloth and set the table. When we were done, we hurried into the kitchen to take the cake out of the oven. After the cake had cooled, we frosted it. Just then, the lightning flashed, and this time it lit the whole sky. 
Even before the last flash had faded, the thunder rolled, boomed, crashed, and barooned just above us. The storm was here. Perfect, Grandma cooed. Just perfect. She beamed as she added the last strawberry to the glistening chocolate frosting on top of our thunder cake. As rain poured down on our roof, Grandma cut a wedge for each of us. She poured us steaming cups of tea from the samovar. When the thunder roared above us so hard it shook the windows and rattled the dishes in the cupboards, we just smiled and ate our thunder cake. And from that time on, I never feared the voice of thunder again. All right, our first craft today, children, is we're going to make an ice cream cone. Because Patricia Polacco and her grandma made a thunder cake. But I know sometimes when I don't feel just right, what makes me feel good is to have ice cream. And in summertime, we really like to go for ice cream cones. So I'm going to show you how you can make an ice cream cone. The first thing I did is I took an ordinary coffee filter and I folded it back to make the shape of an ice cream cone. And that's the way it looks. So you can do that. You can take your regular coffee filter and make an ice cream cone. It looks like the sugar cone from an ice cream parlor. And I took this and that's my cone. Then I took cupcake liners, just an ordinary white cupcake liner, and I flattened them out. And that's easy to do. They just flatten right out. And that kind of looks like a scoop of ice cream. And I like, my favorite flavors are chocolate. And I had my brown crayon. I took my brown crayon and I just colored the cupcake liner with my brown crayon. And I can put that on my ice cream cone as my first scoop. Then my next scoop, I thought I would like to have strawberry. So I took my red crayon and I colored the cupcake liner with the red crayon and I made strawberry ice cream. And that's my second scoop. And then I also like chocolate chips so I left it white but I took my brown crayon again and I put in those yummy, yummy chocolate chips and you can put as many as you'd like. You can add a lot of chocolate chips if you would like to put a lot of chocolate chips. Then I'm just going to take my glue and I'm going to glue these on so I can make my ice cream cone. So I'll take first I'm going to put my chocolate one and I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here. I'm going to put this first ice cream scoop right there. Then I'm going to put a little bit of glue on there. And I'm going to put, I think I'll put my strawberry one next. And then on top of that, I'm going to put my chocolate chip. There. And there you have. We didn't make thunder cake, but we did make a yummy ice cream cone. The next books we're going to share, children, are all about clouds. And I don't know about you, but I like to look up into the sky and imagine the shapes that I see in the sky. Because sometimes clouds look like different things that we recognize. And the next two books that we're going to read talk about just that. The first one is Little Cloud by 
Eric Carl. And the second one is, It Looked Like Spilt Milk. And these books talk about the different shapes that clouds can look like in the sky. Little Cloud by Eric Carl. The clouds drifted slowly across the sky. Little Cloud trailed behind. The clouds pushed upward and away. Little Cloud pushed downward and touched the tops of the houses and the trees. The clouds moved out of sight. Little Cloud changed into a giant cloud. Little Cloud changed into a sheep. Sheep and clouds sometimes look alike. Little Cloud changed into an airplane. Little Cloud often saw airplanes flying through the clouds. Little Cloud changed into a shark. Little Cloud once saw a shark through the waves of the ocean. Little Cloud changed into two trees. Little Cloud liked the way trees never moved and stayed in one place. Little Cloud changed into a rabbit. Little Cloud loved to watch rabbits dash across the meadow. Then, Little Cloud changed into a hat because... Little Cloud changed into a clown and needed a hat. The other clouds drifted back. They huddled close together. Little Cloud, Little Cloud, they called, come back. Little Cloud drifted toward the clouds. Oh. Then all the clouds changed into one big cloud and rained. This is the second book that talks about the different shapes that clouds can be. And it's called, It Looked Like Spilt Milk by Charles G. Shaw. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. Sometimes it looked like a rabbit, but it wasn't a rabbit. Sometimes it looked like a bird, but it wasn't a bird. Sometimes it looked like a tree, but it wasn't a tree. just like we made. Sometimes it looked like an ice cream cone, but it wasn't an ice cream cone. Sometimes it looked like a flower, but it wasn't a flower.
Sometimes it looked like a pig, but it wasn't a pig. Sometimes it looked like a birthday cake, but it wasn't a birthday cake. Sometimes it looked like a sheep, but it wasn't a sheep. Sometimes it looked like a great horned owl, but it wasn't a great horned owl. Sometimes it looked like a mitten, but it wasn't a mitten. Sometimes it looked like a squirrel, but it wasn't a squirrel. Sometimes it looked like an angel, but it wasn't an angel. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. It was just a cloud in the sky. The craft children that we're going to do to go along with our clouds books is a sky. And in the sky, we have a rainbow and we have clouds that are in the shapes of things that you might imagine in the sky. So what I did was I took a plain piece of white paper and on the white paper, I colored the whole background blue for the blue sky. So I went all over the paper with the blue crayon and I made a beautiful blue sky. Then I took all the colors of the rainbow and I started and I made my rainbow and I started with my red crayon and I made my first color. I made the red at the top of the rainbow. Then I took my orange crayon and I made the orange for my rainbow. Then I used my yellow and I made the yellow for my rainbow. Then I took my green and I did my green for my rainbow. Then my blue for my rainbow. And then my purple for my rainbow. And I finished my rainbow. Then I said, what kind of shapes would I want to find in the sky if I was looking for cloud shapes? So the first shape I decided to make was for Winnie. And I decided I would make a dog biscuit in the sky. If Winnie was going to look up into the sky, I think he'd want to see a dog biscuit. So I took a cookie cutter that's in the shape of a dog biscuit. And I took my Sharpie and I traced around the cookie cutter. And then I said, what else would I like to see in the sky? And I thought I would like to see the shape of a butterfly. So I put my butterfly on this side of the rainbow and I took my Sharpie and I traced around the butterfly. Then what I can do is I took my cotton balls and because they were quite large, I cut them into small pieces. And I can take my glue and I can put my glue on my shape make dots of glue on my shape, all around my shape, and then I can take my cotton balls and fill in that shape. And when I get all done, what I'm going to have is a shape that looks like a cloud in the shape of my butterfly. And then to make it look more like a butterfly, I put my butterfly's little antennas on the top. And then I can do the same thing for Winnie's dog bone. I can just put some glue on the dog bone that I drew. And I'm going to take my cotton balls 
that I cut into small pieces. I'm going to put them right on Winnie's dog bone. So when he looks up into the sky, he's going to see a yummy dog bone. And it's going to make him hungry when he looks up into the sky. And I had other shapes too. If you wanted to add, you could. I have a star cookie cutter that I could make another cloud, or a heart cookie cutter that I could add another cloud if I wanted to add more clouds to my sky. So this is my look like spilt milk sky. The next book we're going to read, children, is called. The Seashore Book by Charlotte Zolotow. And this is a story about a little boy who goes to the beach with his mom. The Seashore Book by Charlotte Zolotow. What is the seashore like? A little boy asked his mother. He lived in the mountains and had never been to the sea. His mother smiled. Let's pretend, she said. It is early morning at the seashore and it's hard to tell where the sea stops and the sky begins. They are the same smoky gray until the mist shifts from gray to dark white and the dark white to pale purple, and the pale purple to hazy blue, and then suddenly the sun breaks through. It's warm, the cool sand, and it turns the sea green, and the beach is golden gray. You run down to the water's edge, one small dark spot against the brightness of the sand and sea. You bend over and pick up a stone, washed smooth by the sea. You find tiny brown snail shells and oyster shells, crusty gray outside and smooth pearly pink inside. You pick up a clam shell half open and inside a live clam snaps the shell closed. In my hand, the little boy asks. In your hand, the mother says. Then you reach down again and pick up a wet white gull feather from the gulls flying overhead. We sit at the edge of the water and build a castle of wet sand until the waves wash up and suck it back to the sea. The cold water makes your skin feel like peppermint and you are tired. You lie down in the hot noonday sun now, and it feels warm as a big, soft cat covering you. Taking away the chill of the wave and swish-swashing sound of them lulls you to sleep. I watch while you sleep. And you don't see two little gray sandpipers run past you. But when you wake up, you do see their claw prints like pencil lines in the sand. You rub your eyes and it seems there is nothing in the world except the sound of the wind and the rising and falling so song of the waves. You stand and look at the ocean, far, far out, so far it seems a toy. A little white sailboat skims over the water and disappears. The tide is going out. I'm hungry, you say. I am too. So we wade over to a big rock covered with seaweed and moss. We sit there together and eat our sandwiches and drink lemonade from our thermos and watch the small brown sand crabs squaggle at our toes. An airplane 
flies low in the sky. Its shadow on the sand is like a gigantic bird, and you leap off the rock and chase after it until it is gone. I watch you throw your head back and twirl yourself around and around until you are too dizzy to stand and you fall down on the sand. The wind is getting cooler. Long purple streaks of clouds are forming in the sky. We take each other's hands and walk down the beach toward home. The fishing pier we pass is white as a snowfall with hundreds of crying seagulls waiting for the fishing boats to come in when the sun sets. The evening air is so still that the life buoys, ding, ding, dong, sounds right next to us, close and clear and loud. We climb to the top of the dune away from the ocean, but we stop and look back down across the seagrass to the sea. The setting sun is a huge orange ball. You are so tired when we get home that you can hardly stay awake through your hot bath and your dinner. We barely have time to kiss goodnight before you fall asleep. Outside, the lighthouse is flashing. Golden gleam on, golden gleam gone. But you don't see it. You are sleeping so deeply. You don't hear the tide rising. You don't see the small crescent moon outside your window. The ocean is bursting in waves along the shore, covering the rock where we sat and ate our lunch and carrying away seaweed and shells to the sand. The little boy leaned against his mother and smiled. I like the seashore a lot, he said, and now I can always close my eyes and be there the way I was just now with you. In the seashore book, we heard the little boy talk about building a sandcastle. Well, we can't actually build a sandcastle because we're not at the beach, but I'm gonna show you how you can build a sandcastle with some things that you'll have around the house. So the first thing I did, this is what it's gonna look like when you finish. So the first thing I did is I gathered up some paper towel and toilet tissue rolls, and I cut them into four different sizes. As you can see, I have a tall one, a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter, and then a little one. So I cut them into four different sizes. So that was the first thing I did. Then I took a paper plate, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the sand. And I'm going to take my brown crayon, and I'm going to color my paper plate brown so it looks like beach sand. So you can just take your brown crayon, and color all around. And beach sand is all different colors of brown so that it doesn't have to be perfect. You can just color on your paper plate and make it look a little bit like beach sand. Go around the edges. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to look a little bit like sand. Then each of my tubes, the different sizes that I made, I colored this one. I colored it red. And I just went all over the tube and I colored it red. The next one I thought would be nice, I colored it green. So I took my green crayon and I colored it green. And I did the same thing with, I made purple and I made blue. Then I just took some scotch tape and I can tape them to my paper plate so that they'll stay. And I can just tape it down and I can tape my tall one down. Just put a little tape on that and a little tape on your paper plate and it'll stay. 
And I can do the same thing with this one. And then my short one, my little short one. Yeah, and I've got a sand castle. There, okay, and it'll stick. There, so there's my sand castle. And I think every castle needs a flag or a pennant, sometimes they call it, on the top of the castle. So I took a yellow pipe cleaner, you can use whatever color you want, and I cut a little triangle out. And again with my scotch tape, I taped this on, I taped it on the back, and I stuck it into my tallest tower, and I have my flag. And this, children, is a sand castle. And if you wanted to, you could go outside and actually put sand in it. But this is lovely, just like this. And it kind of is like the sand castle that the little boy made in our story, The Seashore Book. Our next story, children, is called That's Not a Daffodil by Elizabeth Honey. And this is a story about a little boy named Tom who plants a seed. And he has to wait patiently for his seed to grow. That's Not a Daffodil by Elizabeth Honey. One day, Mr. Yilmaz from next door called in with a basket of apples and crumpled paper bag. What is it? asked Tom. It's a daffodil, said Mr. Yilmaz. That's not a daffodil, said Tom. That's an onion. Well, let's plant it and see, said Mr. Yilmaz. So they planted the bulb with the pointy end up in a large round terracotta pot. There, said Mr. Yomaz, patting it down, that will grow into a beautiful daffodil. Tom watched the pot, but nothing happened. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The next time Mr. Yomaz dropped by, he asked, How's the daffodil? That's not a daffodil, said Tom. That's a desert. Then we will make it rain, said Mr. Yomaz. So they made it rain and they put it in the sun. When Mr. Yilmaz brought in a fine bunch of carrots, he asked, How's the daffodil? Don't know, said Tom. Well, let's go have a look, said Mr. Yilmaz. Now, what do you think? asked Mr. Yilmaz. That's not a daffodil, said Tom. That's a green beak. So it is, laughed Mr. Yilmaz. From time to Tom, time, Tom measured the beak. It was growing, and while Mr. Yilmaz was away in Turkey, the green beak opened up. How's the daffodil? asked Mr. Yilmaz when he came home. That's not a daffodil, said Tom. That's a hand with five flat fingers, green fingers. Fingers, agreed Mr. Yilmaz. <laughs> One blustery winter's day, Mr. Yilmaz blew in with a large pumpkin. How's the daffodil, Tom? That's not a daffodil. That's Grandpa's hairs in the wind. Mr. Yilmaz chuckled. He needs a haircut. It was pouring with rain when Mr. Mr. Yilmaz brought in a bucket of lemons. Ah, now we can see the bud of the daffodil, said Mr. Yilmaz. That's not a daffodil, said Tom. That's a wet rocket. To the moon, asked Mr. Yilmaz. To the moon, said Tom.
One day, Mr. Yilmaz brought his grandchildren to play, Lila and Little Khan, and their big bouncy dog, Carabash. They were trying to catch Carabash when he bounded away and knocked the pot. Uh-oh. Oh, no, cried Little Khan. Call the plant ambulance, cried Layla. Mr. Yilmaz, yelled Tom. Mr. Yilmaz helped them pat the soil back in. Will it still grow, asked Tom. I believe so, said Mr. Yilmaz. The roots have not been disturbed. Now give it a drink, Layla, and put some water in the bird bath, too. In a couple of days, the daffodil wasn't floppy anymore. How's the daffodil after its little bump? asked Mr. Yilmaz. That's not a daffodil, said Tom. That's a street light. Mr. Yilmaz smiled. Shining yellow, spring's not far away. When Tom came home for a weekend at his grandma's, he ran to look in the backyard. Mr. Yilmaz, cried Tom. Mr. Yilmaz, ask the question, ask the question. How is the daffodil? laughed Mr. Yilmaz. Quick, come and look. Oh, said Mr. Yilmaz, now is that a daffodil? Tom nodded his head. That is a daffodil, yes. And it's also a trumpet of gold. So children, oftentimes when you plant flowers, flowers that bloom, you attract butterflies. So the next craft that we're going to do is we're going to make a butterfly. And I'm going to show you how I did this. This is what we're going to end up with. So the first thing I did is I took either a toilet tissue roll or a paper towel roll, and you can make it as big or as small as you would like. And I took, I had a black crayon and a yellow crayon, and I painted, or colored, crayoned the, the roll. I put yellow on the two ends, and I went all the way around with my yellow crayon. In the middle, I did with my black crayon, and I went all the way around with my black crayon. And then, I like to have a happy little butterfly, so I gave him his two eyes, and then with my red crayon, I gave him a happy face. So I had, I turned this into this. Then what I did is I took a black pipe cleaner, and I cut it to whatever length I wanted it to be. I cut it to about this size, and I stuck it in, and I taped it, and those are my little butterfly's antenna. Then I took a piece of tissue paper and I cut it into a square and I gathered it in the middle like this and I put some tape on the back and I just put it on the back of my tissue roll and taped it on and very simply I end up with a butterfly. The last story we're going to share today is called Little Owl's Night by Divya Shurivan. And this is a story about a little owl and a question he asks his mom. He's curious because owls are awake at night and they sleep during the day. And he's curious about what happens after he goes to sleep and daytime begins. So Little Owl's Night. Little Owl was having a wonderful night. He watched the funny possum family waddle along in a neat row. Hedgehog sniffed around the mushroom patch. Skunk was eating berries because he could find no snails.
By the river, beavers gnawed at trees. Turtle hid in her shell as fireflies danced all around. Little Owl visited his friend, the raccoon. As they sat in the clover, fog rolled in and hovered just overhead. Moths fluttered towards the moon. Silver dust fell from their wings. Little Owl wanted to follow, but it was time to head home. On the way, Little Owl flew by Grumbly Cave. Bear was inside, snoring up a storm. Wake up, Bear, don't sleep all night. Little Owl sang, I want to show you the moon. But the bear kept snoring as usual. Little Owl flew home to his tree, gazing at the sky. He wondered if the bear had ever seen stars. Little Owl sat on his branch. How he loved the night forest. Frog croaked softly. Cricket chirped. Smartly. Little Owl heard rustling at the foot of his tree. Fox had come to say hello. It was late now. The bats were gliding home. Mama, Little Owl whispered, Tell me again how night ends. The moon and the stars fade to ghosts, Mama said. Spider webs turn to silver threads. Dewdrops sparkle on leaves and grass like tiny stars come down. Moon flowers close and morning glories open. The sky brightens from black to blue to red and red to gold. The rooster crows, the crows caw, and day begins, said Mama. But Little Owl did not hear. He was fast asleep. Well, I think that was a very good bedtime story, boys and girls, because look who else is asleep, not just Little Owl, I think our story put Winnie to sleep. So it was nice sharing this time with you boys and girls, and I want to remind you to look for my show on RCTV. It's Storytime with Winnie and Nan, and you can also find us on YouTube. If you search for Storytime with Winnie and Nan, you can find us and watch us anytime at all. And again, if you have a chance, you can send me an email if there's a story you'd like us to read, you just go to winnieandnan at gmail.com. So till I see you next time, bye-bye.